Serene, calm, peaceful. That is the field before the lines and bases are put down. The grounds crew performs the same ritual for every game on every field, laying chalk lines, putting down bases, mowing the outfield. It's as timeless as the game itself, and it's all in anticipation of two words, play ball. and welcome to the fourth day of the 2019 Dixie Boys State Tournament. In today's game, we got North Myrtle Beach, the home team, versus St. George, the away team. This is going to be a very competitive game, and the loser of the game will actually be eliminated from the state tournament. My name is Harry Perry. I'm actually one of the athletic managers here at Beaufort County Parks and Recreation. I'm very happy to be bringing this play-by-play -play game for you today. On Nor for North Myrtle Beach, their pitcher starting off today is number 19, Ethan Matthews. Our catcher is going to be Alan McCormick, number 20. At first base, we have number 10, Chance Hall. At second base, we have number 5, Ethan Allen. At third base, we have number three, Izzy May. At shortstop, we have number two, Chase Sturgeon. In the left outfield, we have number four, Briggs Lawmore. Center field, we have number 66, Santino Petrola, who was a great pitcher the other day for him, throwing quite a number of pitches, upwards in 80-some pitches, but he had about eight K's, which is very good for this age group. You don't see a lot of pitchers at this age group being able to throw that many different strikeouts in, in such a long day, especially with all that heat. And last but not least in our right field, we have number 26, Nico Goheen, who's also a very talented base runner, scored quite a number of RBIs already in this, week, in this week's tournament. The leadoff batter, for St. George will actually be number four, Hunter Hartzog, a very popular name of this, this week's tournament. And I think we have about four or five of them. Don't know if, yeah, they have quite a bit of them. Uh, your second batter up will be number nine, Trevor Hilton. And the third batter will be number one, Tyler Wright. Your cleanup batter will be number 20, Jake Herndon. Let's get ready. Our behind-the-plate umpire is Mark Rennix, another employee of the Park and Recreation Department, pulling double duty today. And let's get this ball game started. The boys spread out to their positions. And Hunter Hartzog lines up behind the plate. First pitch, little on the outside for ball one. We got one and one to count right now. It was a good pitch right down the middle. Here we go, pitch number three. Wind up. Strike number two, low ball at the bottom of the box. Right now the pitch count is at one and two. So batter's got a little bit 
behind on the pitcher right now. Foul tip and he stays alive. Still a one-two count for Hunter Hartzog as Ethan Matthews is gonna to continue to try to take advantage of being ahead on the count. Maybe working some different pitches to get him swinging, change up his speed a little bit. Ball way outside for ball number two. Even count at two and two. And with all that being said, actually listen over to field number three. There's another Hartzog over there. I believe that's also St. George team playing, so maybe those two are related. Maybe Hunter and Connor Hartzog are related. Full count right now, 3-2. Hunter's worked his way back in. It's ball four and we got a walk there. So Hunter really kept his composure even when he was behind in the count, ended up getting on base. Next up we have up to bat number nine, Trevor Hilton. Trevor looks like he's getting some last minute instruction from his coach. They check on first base. Now that's something we've seen a lot of this tournament. It hasn't really been too effective for most of the teams. I've only seen it really work one or two times, and that was by Monk's Corners. Obviously got a lot of depth on that team with a couple of state championship players from last year, and actually one national championship player. So I believe about nine of their 12 guys on their roster have experience at high-level baseball. That's about the fifth pitch over, checking him at first base. I really think he's trying to prove a point here. But as I mentioned, it's really been an Achilles heel for a lot of the pitchers and teams this week with a lot of errors by the first baseman. First pitch, though, is a strike. Maybe he was trying to rock the batter to sleep with all of those pitches to the outside. Owen won the count. And once again, checks down at first base. Trying to get a pickoff. We'll see how many more times they throw that. There we go, good hit right down into center field. Nice pop up. Looks like the shortstop catches it. Checks to make sure that Hunter Hartzog didn't drift too far away from first base. And now we're up to our third batter. Batter number three is number one, Tyler Wright. Got one out in the inning, and so far, number 19, Ethan Matthews, has done a really good job of not, not getting too involved with some of his pitch counts and just staying with it. Ooh, strike one. Looks like Tyler Wright thought about hitting it, but just didn't want to follow through with it. Steal, going to second, slide, he is safe by a mile. Yeah. Now number one, Tyler Wright is known for his power, has hit quite a quite amount of deep balls, but he does like to swing, so hopefully he can connect on one and we can see a little bit of fireworks early on in today's game. There we go, some good contact. Out to the right field. He's going to easily get to first base. And we got somebody going for home. Safe Hunter Hartzog comes in for the first run as they move all the way to second base. Great hitting and running by St. George early on. That makes the score one to nothing. Looks like Tyler Wright's passing off some of his equipment there to his coach, making himself a little bit lighter so he can maybe move around the base a little faster. Normally known for his power hitting, but trying to show that he can be fleet of foot as he moves from second base to hopefully to home. Next up to bat, we got 
the cleanup guy, number 20, Jake Herndon. Still one out. Tyler Wright taking a pretty hefty lead. Got one ball, 1-0 one the count. Ethan Matthews, foul ball. That one went all the way over, crashing into the batting cages. 1-1 one, one the count. Number 19, Ethan Matthews, really likes to play the bottom of the box, and that's a lot of the times where his balls are getting called. Checks make sure that Tyler Wright hasn't drifted too far away from the baits, but Tyler Wright just proven that he has confidence his ability once again drifts far away from second base. Mean strike. Felt the wind from up here. Number 20 really looking to take it out the park if he can connect on this, maybe add a little bit more leeway to their early lead. One, two, the count. Two, two, the count. To be right on the outside of the box to the right. Checks the second base. As I mentioned, the pitchers in this week's game have been extremely concerned with base runners. I know a couple of other announcers have said that. Ball right down the middle and first K right there for number 19, Ethan Matthews, as he gets number 20, Jake Herndon, looking the ball coming down the plate. Next up to bat, we got number 10, Landon Messick, who actually shares a common name of my fellow commentator up here, Tanner. Owen won the count. Deep wind up. Owen to the count as number 10 Landon Messix has found himself behind on the pitcher. Now I'm going to sound like I'm repeating myself, but number two next up to bat is actually another Hartzog. Foul tip. Make sure nobody gets hit by the ball. 0 oh 2 still the count. Ethan Matthews has got to try to take advantage of this. He's got a couple balls to give up if he wants to try to work the outside corners again. Ooh. Ball gets away from the catcher, and Tyler Wright scoots on over to third base, takes advantage of this deep backstop we have on field two at Oscar Frazier. One and two, the count. Good hit right back in the, looks like mid right field. Caught by number 26, Nico Goheen, to round out the end of St. George's little run there. Midway through the first, we have a one nothing lead by St. George. We're going to see how North Myrtle Beach can take advantage of their first inning, maybe get off to a good start. Do you want me to say that when you say that stuff, or are you saying that? Uh, and we'll be right back here on the County Channel shortly.
All right, I got you. All right, welcome back to the game. Sorry about some of our technical difficulties. So far, what we've seen, so far, what we've seen is two outs, um, striking out number 10, Chance Hall. And now up to bat, we have number, appears number 19, the, the other pitcher, the battling pitcher, Ethan Matthews. Got a man on second base. Looking to put North Mortal Beach tying the game back up. If you look off in the right field, we have a very hot right out baseman waving himself down with his hat. Doesn't guess doesn't appear too worried about this ball coming his way, and then there it goes. Foul ball. It's like I jinxed him. Count right now is two to one, that foul ball. On the mound, in case we missed it, is number 10, Chance Hall. Or, I apologize, number 10, Landon Messick. My apologies. Once again, that deep backstop has created issues for other catchers and pitchers as this week has gone on. It creates a little bit more time and a lot more room for error to happen as guys are round and third. Three won the count. Good hit in the right field. One man comes home. That looks like Chase Sturgeon to tie up the game one to one. And a nice RBI single. Two outs. Next up to bat, number three, Izzy May. Good hit into almost the same spot, but this time the right fielder is there to catch it out and close out the first inning. So right now at the end of the first inning, we have the score one to one as North Myrtle Beach and St. George are tied. We're gonna take a little break here. There will be a lot more baseball played at the start of the second inning. Enjoy the commercials. See you soon. Hi, I'm Tony Mills. I'm a naturalist and educator here in the Lowcountry. You know, Beaufort County is an amazing place to live. Not only is it beautiful here, but we have an amazing diversity of living things. In this series, we're not going to travel to other parts of the world, like Africa or Asia, to see neat things. We're going to look at habitats right here in Beaufort County, and we're going to look at some of the animals and plants that make this area so special. Join me for Coastal Kingdom on the County Channel.
It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to the start of the second inning where St. George is up to bat. And another name, not repeating myself, that we've heard quite a bit. Number two, Hayden Hartzog is up to bat. Nice pitch, fouled backwards. One thing I have noticed about most of the Heart Togs is they are ball players. Most of them find their way on base and making a difference for their team. Now I know today we have at least three Heart Togs playing all for St. George. One for the junior boys and one for the boys, or two for the boys. This pitch. 0-2 oh, the count. Could hear Mark Rennix from up here. Nice strong call on that one. Way outside for ball number one. One, two, the count. Ethan Matthews did pretty well in the first inning, only allowing one run. Only three guys got on base. Good hit, and once again, both these teams really picking on that shallow right field. As Hunter Hart, uh, Hayden Hartzog grounds, gets all the way to second. Next up to bat, we got number 12, Harrison Wimberly. He is a tall young man, towering over even our umpire. Not, not that our umpire is that tall. No, I know him personally, but still, for a 14-year-old boy, that is, is quite a, quite a height to have. Batting up after Harrison Wimbley is number five, Manning Thompson, and after him is number 11, Ivy Sweatman. Strike one. Now, if I'm Ethan Matthews, I'm going to try to take advantage of this long torso that number 12 Harrison Wimbley does possess. That's one downfall to being so tall. Strike two. And Harrison finds himself behind the count already. Now he's going to have to try to fight his way back and hopefully bring home Hartzog, who made him the most out of his nice little shallow hit to right field. Strike three, and Ethan Matthews catches Harrison looking at that ball. Is out. Is out number one. Next up to bat, we have number five, Manning Thompson. Vast height difference from him to Harrison. Maybe that would create a little bit of difficulty there for Ethan Matthews. Seems something minor, but could create a little bit of an issue getting used to batting somebody with a higher pop. Foul tip. Hunter Hartzog taking advantage of that, skipping on over the way to third. Counts at 0-1 with one out at the top of the second. Lines up, ball outside. One and one the count right now. Doesn't look like Hartzog is gonna take too big of a lead on this, just maybe two steps. First strike thrown by Ethan Matthews versus Manning Thompson. Right now the count's at one and two. Ethan Matthews already sitting on 32 pitches. Foul ball. That makes 33 pitches. And now we have seen some of these older boys work their way all the way to up in the 80s to 90 pitches. Now the max cap for this age group is 105 pitches in one day. Straight down the middle, catches him looking. Ethan Matthews definitely building his confidence as he has just caught the last two batters looking. Number 11 up to bat now, Ivy Sweatman. Hoping to bring home Hartzog to give them an early lead. They calling that a ball? He called a ball. I believe, I believe Mr. Rennix called a ball on that one, but we're going to wait and see what he holds up in a second. 
foul tip. So right now, Mark really hasn't shown us too much. Not a big, uh, not big on holding up what the count is for us to see. Oh, almost a great play by Ethan Matthews. Loses his glove, slips, and once again, not going to take advantage of the overthrow. So that now brings home Hayden Hartzog and gives St. George an early lead 2-1 to one with a man on first. Two outs right here at the top of the fourth, and we're back at the top of the lineup with once again a Hartzog, number four, Hunter Hartzog. I'm going to assume that these two have to be brothers. I may be wrong. Catches him looking. Hopefully that strike gets Ethan Matthews' confidence back a little bit after dropping his glove. These things happen in baseball, and it's good to see a kid of his age keep his composure. One and one the count right there as the ball is called, and we see Ethan Matthews trying to work that bottom right corner as he has almost every time he's gotten a ball called. Big swing and a miss right there for Hunter Hartzog. One and two the count. He may have gotten contact on that. A little bit tough to tell from the angle I'm sitting at. Good hit. That's going to be a foul ball. Now we've seen a lot in this game, some, some balls getting down in the short right field, and a lot of both teams have been able to take advantage of that by getting on base and bringing some people home. Ball, ball outside. Maybe that ball might be a little bit slick today. Looks like North Myrtle Beach had a little bit tough time handling it. Hopefully they can shake it off a little bit. Right now, two and two the count. And we got a guy going for second, and he's out. Probably one of the better times I've seen the catcher be able to make that throw to second during this tournament. Big props to number 20, Alan McCormick, for making that throw, seeing it early on. One thing I will say is we're going to take a look at the beautiful Oscar Frazier field that is greatly maintained by the Park and Recreation's maintenance staff. They've done an excellent job throughout this tournament being on time and keeping the games going as fast paced as possible. We even had a heavy rainfall last night, which is something we should probably talk about. Some of these teams had to come in at 11 o'clock this morning and finish the, most of them were finishing the fifth through the seventh innings of last night's game. Um, so. Something interesting that you don't normally see is the pitch count. If a pitcher did pitch earlier today, even though it was a different game, counts against their pitch count. Um, actually, I do believe one of St. George's pitchers is continuing to pitch today, but luckily he only pitched four pitches in the earlier game. So still up on the mound, I have number 10, Landon Messix, which my apologies earlier, my, my colleague's last name is actually Tanner Mace, Massey. I messed up his name. And I am just getting, just getting chewed out for messing up his name earlier today. Not going to be able to live that one down. No, now we got Ethan Allen up to bat, number five right now. And he's been a little spark plug almost every single time he's been up to bat. Well, first pitch is first pitch is a strike. Now Ethan Matthews has gotten on base I think every time I've seen him up to bat except once. He does like to make a lot of contact. Oh and two the count. Myself kind of has a soft spot for short guys because I myself am short. I always like when they're successful out there on the playing field. Sh 
Caught him looking. Number 10, Landon Massex gets his first K of this inning, bottom of the second. Next up to bat, we got number 26, Nico Goheen. Good foul, good hit, I'm, my apologies, but they got him looking. They quick find themselves, North Myrtle Beach finds themselves with two outs early on. Next up to bat, we have number 66, Santi. Santino Petrola. I watched this young man pitch a heck of a game the other day. I think he threw upwards of 81 pitches, had about nine strikeouts. Far ball, far ball outside. Want to know the count. Santino is definitely, in my opinion, improving himself as one of the more elite pitchers I've seen at this tournament. 2-0 the count. Two one, the count is Massix trying to work his way back to even up the count. Oh. Three one, the count. Massix going to have to try to throw a couple different things at him in order to try to work his way back in the lineup. Good hit, shortstop gets it. First base, and that's a quick three and out to end the inning. At the end of the second, we have a score of North Myrtle Beach one, St. George two. And we'll be right back with the top of the third here on the County Channel. Texting and driving again. Yes. Hi, Leah. Hi, Dad. Sorry about your bumper. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Josh Reddick, World Series champ, and you're watching the County Channel. I'm from South Carolina, and my vote counts. I am from South Carolina. The Palmetto State. Mi voto cuenta. I'm a South Carolinian, and my vote counts. And my vote counts. This year, thousands of South Carolinians will vote using the newest, most advanced voting technology in the world. Every vote matters, and every vote counts. I'm from South Carolina, and my vote counts. And we're back with the top of the third inning. St. George up to bat. Still have a heart zog up at bat. I feel like if I had to go through without the lineup sheet, I would just take a shot in the dark and think it was a hot zog out there. Now, so far, Ethan Matthews has done a pretty good job of keeping the score low. He's gotten himself out of a couple of sticky situations. Man, having a tough time. Having a tough time speaking today. Now, North Myrtle Beach, one thing I will say about them as I've watched them through this whole entire tournament is they are a late-inning team, so it's a little bit different to see them up early on, but they're a very inspired group when they are down. But right now, it seems that they have some pretty good composure. Good strike right there, right down the plate, caught him looking. Ethan Matthews definitely has a lot of confidence so far today. He's doing pretty well in keeping his strike count where he needs it. Once again, working that bottom right corner brings the count to one and one. Another ball, that's a high one. Two and one the count. 
Hartzog is going to try to take advantage of this. He did run, bring a run in last time with some very good base running. A little bit of adjustment by the mass for our umpire. I believe we're sitting on 3-1 to count. Ethan Matthews got to try to work his way back. There's a strike. Full count right now, 3-2. And as I said, Ethan Matthews has done a spectacular job so far keeping his composure in some situations that might fluster a young pitcher. Good foul tip right there. Hartzog trying to <clears throat> keep keep him throwing. Yeah. True gentleman right there, number nine, Trevor Hilton helping out our umpire get that ball. Good hit, f high, but it's a big foul ball, almost taking out a spectator looking at the other St. George team. Always got to keep your head on the swivel here at Oscar Frazier with the three baseball parks. Oh, hit the batter and looks like Hartzog's going to get on base. Now up to bat, we got number nine, Trevor Hilton. Already did his good deed for the day, getting the ball for our umpire, Mr. Rennix. Far outside as Hartzog's going to steal second and is successful. Really good base running by the, the top of the lineup of St. George's. They've been able to take advantage in the first inning on some, some key base running and good bat ball placement by their hitters. Two and oh the count right now. Trevor Hilton looking to get on base so they can get their big power hitter up to bat. Number one, Tyler Wright. Once again, Hartzog's off, taking advantage. He's coming home. Now this is where that deep backstop. Oh, looks like we got a run down here. Uh-oh. He's going back and forth. Oh, he zigged when he should have zagged and got out by number 19, Ethan Matthews, and bounces away pretty confidently. Got one out right now and <clears throat> still up to bat is number nine, Trevor Hilton. Through this whole tournament, I've only actually seen a kid in that situation once get out of it, and it was a very fast kid from Chester County. Ty Quell P, who actually is one of our uh, scorekeeper's favorite players so far. Raymond Hines up here was boasting about him almost all week. Good hit, high. Looks like the second baseman is going to get him out. Now this is kind of not what Tyler Wright wants to see. Being a power hitter, he wants to see a couple people on bases. So sometimes it's a little bit more beneficial to not risk when you got such a big bat coming up. Two outs right now at the top of the third. Low scoring affair, just two to one. But last time Tyler Wright was out, him and Hartzog kind of made some magic, but looks like Mr. Wright's going to have to do it himself here on this one. Coming close inside, maybe trying to brush him back just a little bit. 1-0 the count. That was a hard pitch. Could hear it hit the cat catcher's mitt from up here in the Press box. One and one the count. Good hit in the center field. Is it going to get down? It does. And Tyler Wright gets on the first base. Good single hit right there. Next up to bat, we got number 20, Jake Herndon. Another guy pretty tall. Probably play power forward if he decides to play basketball in his age group. Ethan Matthews has had some success versus the taller batters today. Seems like an awkward statistic, but 
something that could be noted. Once again, going back to check the runner, Tyler Wright doesn't appear to have much fear with him, him getting picked off at one. Another deep foul, or foul ball that almost goes into field number three at Oscar Frazier. Owen won the count. One. Owen won the count right now. Owen to the count, my apologies. Jake Herndon's going to have to fight his way back to stay alive here, where it could be a quick inning for St. George. No tip there, and he's called out. All right, we're going to take it. The correct the score is one to two. So far, Ethan Matthews has done a spectacular job of getting out of the innings. Now he has thrown 61 pitches already today. At, as we start to move into the bottom of the third inning. So already a heavy load on his arm, but he's kept the score pretty low for such a high pitch count. Average. It, it, it doesn't matter, man. It doesn't matter. I'm good, honestly. All right, still up at pitcher for St. George is number 10, Landon Messix. His catcher behind the plate there is number nine, Trevor Hilton. At first base, we have number 12, Harrison Wimbley, who has been probably one of the taller kids I've seen at this tournament. Working our way over to second base, number four, we got a heart dog. Playing next, to, playing next to him at third base is going to be number 20, Jake Herndon. And keeping the Hartzogs close to one another at shortstop, we have Hayden Hartzog. In left field, we have Ivy Sweatman. Center field, we got number one, Tyler Wright, the power hitter. And at right field, we actually have Connor Carlton. I, Failed to realize that number five, Manning Thompson, was actually their DH. Now to bat for North Myrtle Beach, number four, Briggs Lorimore. Actually, their left fielder. Nice big wind up, but balls in the dirt, trickles behind both the catcher and our umpire. Now, North Myrtle Beach's fans have been some of the most spirited fans I've seen at this week's tournament. Another ball outside, 2-0 the count. They're a very passionate group and almost kind of give the effect of the 10th man at points when they're out there cheering. Three and 0 the count as that ball kind of skips back behind our umpire. Here we go, another another act of kindness by number two, Chase Sturgeon running out to get the ball. Mark's had a long week walking from the back of the plate to the back of the backstop. Got to be gentle on some of these umpires. Another pitch, and there's the first strike. Three one the count as Messick's trying to fight his way back. Even this up. Foul tip, and now we got a full count, 3 2. And let's see what they try to do. Sometimes I've noticed in the past games that North Myrtle Beach has gone with a bunt if they're they're in the third inning or after in full count. But good hit once again in the right field. Will it get down? No, but what a spectacular catch by the right fielder. Connor Carlton, the guy that I, I mentioned early on. Now up to bat number two for North Myrtle Beach, 
Chase Sturgeon. Sometimes little plays like that can inspire a team to close out the inning pretty fast. So we'll see if they can use that type of momentum to carry them into having a pretty good fast inning, keeping the score where it's at. The windup, pitch, right down the plate. Great pitch right there for strike number one. Strike two. He's, Sturgeon has not swung at either ones and he's really working the bottom of the box. Foul tip. Sturgeon just trying to get some contact on the ball, maybe build a little bit of confidence. That ball was tipped. Still 0-2 the count. One out in the inning. Wind up. Nice little bounce, but got him out. Two outs right now is Messick finds a way to have some great help by his third baseman, Jake Herndon. Next up to bat for North Myrtle Beach, number 20, Alan McCormick. It looks like we're actually going to have a pitching change by St. George as Messick leaves the game with a final pitch count of 41. So. Very good pitching by him early on. We're waiting here to change. And it looks like number nine is coming in to pitch, Hilton. And Hartzog's going to go behind the plate. Going to find out which Hartzog is going to go behind the plate, I believe. I believe it's going to be number four, Hunter Hartzog, coming behind the plate, moving him from second base. And Landon Messick, number 10, is actually going to go to second base. So same guys staying out there, just kind of shifting them around a little bit. One thing worth bringing up during this time while Hilton warms up his arm is our tremendous sponsors that we had at this week's tournament. First one has been Outback Steakhouse, which, as many of us know, provides some of the best food for your nice family nights out. We also had Jimmy John's with really good subs they made there, and they've, they've actually been kind enough to cur uh, cater for us up here at the press box and really enjoyed their hospitality and some of the food that they've shared with us. Number fif 15 kind of filling in right there as Hartzog got ready. A bird's eye view right here from the field number two at Oscar Frazier. So we still are seeing number nine, Hilton. Trevor Hilton warm up his arm. As number 20, Alan McCormick for North Myrtle Beach. Going to try to maybe get a little bit of. Get a little run. Ball one. He also must like to play the bottom bottom right corner. Number 20, he's got to try to make something happen for North Myrtle Beach. Good hit out into the field. Looks like Tyler Wright. Oh, Tyler Wright didn't get it. 
actually was number eight, Connor Carlton, as they close out the inning. So finishing out the four, the third inning, the score is still North Myrtle Beach one, St. George two, but as I mentioned, North Myrtle Beach is a comeback team. We're gonna take a brief break here and we'll see you back at the top of the fourth. The County Channel is also available on video on demand. Go to BeaufortCountySC.gov, scroll down to public meetings, click watch now, and then click the video on demand button and select your program from the list. Call the meeting to uh, order. If you'd like a DVD of this program, click on the link on the right and fill out the order form. And thank you for watching the County Channel. Nobody likes an awkward silence. You can actually use it for something good. You haven't really been yourself lately. Are you okay? Find out how you can help a friend with their mental health at SeizeTheAwkward.org. All right, and welcome back to the top of the fourth inning here at Oscar Frazier Field number two. St. George got number 10 Landon Messix up to bat here. He was actually just came out from pitching. Now he's looking, he actually moved to second base, so very versatile player. Gonna see if he can get on base, take advantage of it. Looks like number 19, Ethan Matthews, still is the pitcher, but a little bit of a huddle going on right there. Just want to make sure I'm correct. Yes, he is. Number 19, Ethan Matthews, still the pitcher. Not yet. First pitch, good, straight to the shortstop. What a catch right there. By number two, Chase Sturgeon. Next up to bat, once again, sounding like a broken record, we got a Hartzog. Number two, this one is Hayden Hartzog. I will make sure I ask at the end of the game if they are related. First pitch is a strike one. The ball was in the dirt, but Hayden, I guess, was just feeling pretty good about it and took a swing at it anyway. That's a high ball, one and one the count. Great catch though by the catcher. Number 20, Alan McCormick. He didn't hit it hard, but he hit it in a perfect spot. Good contact right there, and Ethan Matthews making sure that he takes time. Looked like he even looked over at Hartzog, maybe a little bit of a competitive edge there, trying to prove that he could keep up with him. Now here we go. Here's the tall guy, number 12. Harrison Wimberly. So far, Ethan Matthews have made quick work with some of the taller batters, so see if he can continue that streak as he kind of brushes him back a little bit there with the first ball. He's got to be somewhere over 6'2". He's a tall young man. Brushing him back, though. 2-0 two, two and oh the count. Nobody on base, two outs. There you go, strike one, two and one the count. North 
Myrtle Beach. Looks like this is about the time where they usually start catching some fire. Two and two the count right now. Sounded like a little bit of contact was made on that, but not enough to divert the path of the ball. Oh, low bottom left corner. Three and two the count right now. Got a full count. This is where you see if you got your gamblers. Wimberley's going to take a swing at it. He does not. Caught him looking again. Second time that Wimberley's been up to bat, and Matthews has gotten the best of him. As that brings us down to the bottom of the fourth inning as Matthews makes quick work. Pitch count for Ethan Matthews is at 71. Only threw 10 pitches that inning. That's a very good inning for pitchers of this age group. Now, as I mentioned, and I'll probably mention a few more times as we got three more innings, is North Myrtle Beach tends to catch fire in the later innings. I don't know what it is about from the fourth inning on, but they are a late game team and have done it almost all tournament. A, a few times coming down from multi-runs to bring it back. Chester, when they played Chester, I believe that they were down about three, four runs. I, I believe the score might have been eight to four and they rallied back to win the game. It was a very tough call, controversial call made, but still that's the way the game is played and it worked in the favor of North Myrtle Beach. And they just kept on rolling to win that game versus Chester. Once again, we'd like to thank a few more sponsors. Local Pie has actually sponsored us and catered here twice this week. Very grateful for them dropping off quite a few pizzas for us. Very good pepperoni pizza there. Station 300 is another one of our sponsors. They are a great time for the family. If you want to make a nice little Friday, Saturday night out of it, take the wife, take the kids, and really enjoy yourself. Maybe if you're a teenager, go there and have some nice, safe fun. All right, as we get ready to go, Number 10, Chance Hall from North Myrtle Beach is going to be the leadoff batter for the bottom of the fourth inning. Let's see if he's going to be the one that gives them a little bit of spark. Normally they like a little bit more pressure and find themselves with two outs before they start catching fire. First ball was tipped. 0-1 so the count. Far outside right for ball one. One one the count right now. Two and one the count right now. As Trevor Hilton getting his first full inning up at up on the mound. That is a fair ball, and let's see if he can beat the ball there. He did. It was a misplayed ball right there by number 12, Harrison Wimbley. Would think his length would help him on that one and would have, but just wasn't able to bring that ball in. Next up to bat, we have the so far highly confident number 19, Ethan Matthews who's had a great day pitching for North Myrtle Beach. Let's see if he can complement that with some great hitting. As he calls a brief break in the action to reset. Now we're gonna get back to it. Got a ball low to the left outside. Now, checks to first, brushes him back a little bit. Also, the catcher is looking at first, too. These teams have been very concerned with runners, and it's probably been the, due to the fact that North Myrtle Beach and St. George have both aggressively based run throughout this whole entire tournament. We've seen it quite a bit. Nice little bouncing ball chopper. Could it get a double play? No, but got the guy out at second. 
Good play right there by the second baseman and shortstop. Just a little bit too slow to catch the fast base runner, Ethan Matthews, who has, has really had a pretty good game today. Next up to bat, number three, Izzy May. Had a couple of really good, really good baseball names so far, from BJ Balls to Daily Hits so far at, at this tournament. And I gotta say, I think Izzy May's name might be moving up there too. Nice single hit right there by Izzy May. Next up to bat, we got, I'm just going to call him the spark plug, number five, Ethan Allen. Once again, special place in my heart for the, for the little guys out there, and he has done a spectacular job of getting on base. Call me biased, but if you're under under a certain height, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a fan of you. And my grandfather used to always tell me it's not the size of the dog in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. And number five, Ethan Allen has definitely shown that early on in the state tournament. Hopefully he can show off for you guys a little bit while I'm watching. Good hit right there as it gets down. It looks like he might even get him home. Throw goes home, but safe. Number 19, Ethan Matthews helping out his team by adding another run to the score. But they did catch Izzy May out at third. So good composure kept there by St. George. And ended, up, ended up being able to get one out. And they're sitting on two outs in the inning. Score is two to two. So this. This is where you start to see North Myrtle Beach get it on, and maybe it is number five that tends to get him going, Ethan Allen. Ball one as Hartzog checks first base. Now up to bat, we do have number 26, Nico Goheen. Nico's actually been a pretty popular name this week also for first names. Good hit, but that's a foul ball. Leaving the ballpark, skating into some trees here. I wish I had a little bit more information to share about these guys, but we unfortunately don't have their bios up here. So we're just gonna have to go off what we've seen so far from them. Far ball outside to the right. Coaches for St. George are Brent Jackson, Pinckney Thompson, and Richard Purvis. As that ball's hit right to the shortstop, and that's a, the third out, and that'll bring us to the end of the fourth inning with the score now tied up two to two. Trevor Hilton has thrown 16 pitches so far, so pretty good. We're going to take a brief break as we take as we exchange the innings and I look forward to seeing you back here soon. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. At a boy. Wait. Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. I'm a South Carolinian, and my vote counts. My vote counts. I'm from South Carolina. The Palmetto State. And my vote counts. My vote counts. Mi voto cuenta. This year, thousands of South Carolinians will vote using the newest, most advanced voting technology in the world. Every vote matters, and every vote counts. I'm a South Carolinian. My vote counts.
And welcome back as we're here at the top of the fifth inning. St. George up to bat. Number five, Manning Thompson, who's actually the DH for St. George. It's North Myrtle Beach and St. George are in a tight game right now, two to two. St. George appears to be a very, very technical game that they like to play. And North Myrtle Beach kind of plays more of an inspirational game led by their pitchers. As I mentioned the other day that I watched, number 66, Santino Petrola, really inspired his team to the victory. And now it looks like Ethan Matthews is playing the role of Mr. Inspiration. First pitch. Ball's out. Foul ball. First baseman could not get to it, but he did, did get a good run at it there. Number Chance Hall, you could see the effort. Just wasn't, didn't have enough juice. Couldn't unhitch the trailer to get there fast enough. <laughs> Another foul ball is 0 and 2 is the count. Ethan Matthews sitting right now on what he wants to see, an 0-2 count. Brings the ball, but or tries to work that bottom right corner. One and two the count. Let's, let's see if number five, Manning Thompson, can work his way out of this. Being the DH means you normally get some pretty good contact on the ball. Two and two the count right now. Top of the five with number five batting. Three and two the count, full count right now. Ethan Matthews kind of walked himself in backwards to this situation, but as he's done early on, maybe he'll be able to work his way out of it. He has a great composure as a young man. And he's really had some very confidence building plays so far. Catches him looking as he kind of swaggers his way around the mound. Our scorekeeper, Raymond Hines, very appreciative of the confidence of number 19, Ethan Matthews. Foul tip right there for number 11, Ivy Sweatman. We got a couple of gentlemen right there running after the ball, trying to keep our umps nice and refreshed as they got long days ahead of them. Not as much youth on their side as our, our young players do. Good play right there. Looks like we got an error. But I think that's going to fall on the shortstop as the error is. He came across the second base try to make that play, allowing number 11, Ivy Sweatman, to get to first base. But good ball placement. And here we go again with the Hartzog. Number four, back up to bat. High, high ball. One thing I have noticed about watching Hunter bat as he really chokes up nice and high on that bat, leaving probably probably higher than most of the other people I've seen. Strike, one and one, and one the count right now. Just wanted to double check with my scorekeeper. Swing and a miss, and another great throw by Ethan Matthews, and he kind of does his little strut around the mound. Two and two the count right now. One thing I will say is when you play the position of pitcher, it is important to have confidence in yourself and you try to wipe away the bad plays, and it does appear that Ethan Matthews does have that type of thing. As he catches him swinging. That's two Ks in this inning. Two outs as we have 
number nine, the, the new pitcher in for St. George is now up to bat Trevor Hilton. Good hit right there. Is it gonna get down? No. And Ethan Matthews has a right to hold his head up high and kind of walk off with that bit, that Conor McGregor type of walk off the off the field because he is having some success today. Ethan Matthews does have 85 pitches right now. Yeah, why don't we take a brief one real quick? All right, we're going to take a quick break right now. As, uh, we allow the, looks like we got a new pitcher in there, number 20, Jake Herndon. All right. We'll be right back here on the County Channel. Welcome back as we're going to cruise on into the bottom of the fifth inning with actually a new pitcher for St. George, number 20, Jake Herndon. Trevor Hilton was the previous pitcher, and his pitch count was at 16. As we're getting a nice fadeaway view by our awesome drone shots that we have going on here. Number 66, one of the guys I've talked about, Santino Petrola, it's a first strike right there, catches him swinging. Nice little tip, bouncer, good connection. Sometimes seems like a routine play, but has backfired on some of these teams, so it's always nice to see the nice basic skills being executed properly as we get North Myrtle Beach gets their first out of the inning. Now batting, number four, Briggs Lawmore. Jake Herndon bringing it down with the first strike. A little bit of delayed call right there by our umpire. Oh, umpire calls for a break real quick. Presets. Looks like we got one and one to count there as Briggs Looks over at his third base coach, check if he wants to change anything, but looks like he's just going to get right back to what he was doing. Ball two coming in there. Two and one the count. And Herndon, who clearly has got some pep behind his throw, probably just has to dial in on his aim. Even count right now at 2-2. Got a good spotter up here named Tanner. Always keeps me on my on my right P's and Q's up here. Swinging and missing, catches him swinging. Briggs walks off. As that is two outs right now for North Myrtle Beach. <clears throat> Score is still tied 2-2 as the third base coach has a nice little chat there with number two, Chase Sturgeon. Right, 
Strike one. Sturgeon did think about... Thought he was going to swing, but he did not. Decided not to. Hesitated as the ball gets away from the catcher. Number five is actually the... Or number nine is actually the catcher now. Trevor Hilton, who was the previous pitcher, I believe they moved Hartzog back to second base. Two and one the count right now. Something to kind of find humorous is watching some of these coaches' interactions with the drone. Um, some of them I don't think realize they're on live TV and pretend to throw stuff at it. Two and two the count right now. They only knew they were on live TV, but kind of kind of makes for a candid camera type of moment for the coaches. Get a little FaceTime for them. Foul tip. There we go. Jake Herndon gets the final strikeout, catches Chase Sturgeon. And we are now, that is now going to bring an end to the fifth inning. That's a pretty good inning for Jake Herndon. 13 pitches. And we'll be right back with the County Channel. It's a beautiful day out here, sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per hour winds are expected. Authorities are asking everyone, stay indoors. Come on, that's it, let's go. This election season, support a candidate with proven leadership skills. Pedro Menendez Diavolis, an accomplished leader who established European settlements in the New World. He can help us better understand early American history and drive investment in archaeology and research. Visit the Santa Elena History Center in historic Beaufort, South Carolina, to learn more about Pedro Menendez and America's untold story. Cast your ballot to re-elect Pedro Menendez today. And welcome back to the top of the sixth inning. St. George up to bat in a tight game, 2-2. Even though it is a tight game, it has been a fast-moving game with a lot of three and outs. And it's only been an hour and a half, which is pretty fast in comparison to our other games. Now up to bat, <clears throat> we have St. George's power hitter, number one, Tyler Wright. Had a lot of success in the first inning, got on base in the third inning. Now he looks like he's hit some type of a chopper. Is it fair ball? Looks like it's going to be a double as he slides in safe. Next up to bat for St. George, number 20, Jake Herndon, who just pitched 13 balls last inning. Kept the score at 2-2. Looks like we have a little bit of discussion. For Tyler, Tyler Wright's kind of lighting up his load, so maybe he can move a little faster. Some of these baseball players really like their accessories when they get up there to bat. It's a newer generation type of thing, but hey, if you look good, you play good sometimes, as the great Deion Sanders used to say. Hey, 
One nothing to count, no outs with a man on second. Two and zero the count right now. Ethan Matthews, once again, kind of doing his Conor McGregor walk around the mound as he gets ready. Steps off the mound real quick, looks back. Check Tyler Wright. Three and zero the count. As Ethan Matthews finds himself behind, but as I mentioned earlier, he he tends to work his way out of these situations many times. Unfortunately, was not able to. One man in scoring position, one man on first base as Herndon takes first base with that walk. Next up to bat, number 10, Landon Messix, who actually started the game as the pitcher for St. George, ended up moving, I believe, to second base. I'm going to have to re-verify if that's where he ended up at the end of last inning. Two guys on base, no outs right now. Ethan Matthews looking at a high pitch count with a nice bunt. And he... He got him out. Way to keep your composure. Kind of stumbled around with the ball, but still got Landon Messick out at first. But it does put two men in scoring position, Tyler Wright and Jake Herndon on third and in second. Next up to bat, we do have number two. We got a heart zog, ladies and gentlemen. Another sighting of a heart zog. Tyler Wright tags up, he's going for home, taking the sprint, and he will get home. That gives St. George the lead. Jake Herndon works his way to third, and even though it wasn't out, it still was a sacrificial type of play right there. Something not talked about as much, and once again, it was a heart zog. They seem like a good ball playing family. Sometimes a bigger man tends to take that for the team. Next up to bat, we got the, a tall kid. I, I can say it every time he comes up, man. Number 12, Harrison Wimberly. We got to get this guy on a basketball court, too. Far ball outside, and maybe fatigue is starting to catch up with Ethan Matthews, as I believe he's at this time probably upwards of 90 some pitches. 93 pitches right now. Only 12 more pitches before he is forced to sit down. Two and zero the count. Two and zero the count right now, and just from my opinion, from seeing Ethan Matthews throughout the whole game, he does appear to be fatiguing. Three and zero the count right now. Loose ball, the deep backstop, playing devil, devil's advocate again, and allowing Jake Herndon to skate in. That now makes the score for St. George to North Myrtle Beach, and it does appear that the coach is coming out to talk to Ethan Matthews. Ethan Matthews pitched a great game, nothing to be ashamed about there, even though he did allow two runs as Not 96 pitches right there for Ethan Matthews, which, like I said, at this young age, that is a lot of pitches for a young man who played very well with a very high success rate. Looks like there's still some discussion right now with the umpire and North Myrtle Beach's coach. So it appears 
We just heard from the coach from North Myrtle Beach, and he's keeping Ethan Matthews on the field, but he's actually moving him to a new position. The new pitcher will be will actually be number 20, Alan McCormick. So it looks like Ethan Matthews is going to go behind the plate as the catcher. Still the, a nice area to showcase your big arm. And number 20, Alan McCormick's going at the plate. Or, I apologize, on the mound. We're going to take a, we're going to take a brief break real quick as the number 20 Allen warms up. We'll be right back with the County Channel. And welcome back here, guys, as we finishing up the number 20 warming up for North Myrtle Beach. They now find themselves down a 4-2 deficit to St. George, but this has been a very back-and-forth game so far. So up to bat, we got the DH for St. George, number five, Manning Thompson. It's going to be definitely interesting to see how North Myrtle Beach handles the pitching change. But as I mentioned, Ethan Matthews still out on the field, played a heck of a game. And North Myrtle Beach tends to be led by their pitcher. So let's see if Alan McCormick can continue this role and, and kind of close out this inning. Foul ball, 0-1 oh, the count. Two outs in this inning already, just needs one more out to close out this inning and get them to the bottom of the sixth inning. Going to make for an exciting seventh inning here. This game is moving along pretty good. Way to get in the way of that ball, Ethan Matthews, and I am going to have to agree with my, uh, my co-worker up here, Raymond Hines, that he's kind of kind of worn off on me. I really enjoy his confident spirit that he's got going out there. Because he is backing it up with some very good play. A lot of pep right there. And there's a strikeout for Alan McCormick. Well, nice way to come in. Nice low pitch count for him. We're now heading into the bottom of the six, and I was uh, trying to, let me try to get, uh, if I can get Alan McCormick's pitch count one more time for my fellow Tanner. Three pitches. That is a whole lot of pitches in one inning for one guy. Now I'm just messing with you folks. Three pitches is really good. Came in, did what he needed to do, and relieved Ethan Matthews. Still up on the mound for St. George is number 20, Jake Herndon has come in so far, done a pretty good job of maintaining his team's lead and keeping North Myrtle Beach's rallies kind of at bay. Now we're going to see if we can start to hear North Myrtle Beach's fans starting to clamor over there. They are a very passionate group of people. And you got to enjoy that, especially this is really a great type of experience to have and something that these young men will remember for a long time. Um, a lot of A lot of them will remember this for probably their whole lives, even if they continue to play baseball on into higher levels or if they decide to stop after this. But a lot of talent on the field, and you hope to see these kids continue with sports. But 
the character memories and friends that are made through this are things that cannot be bought or replaced. So, Up to bat, we actually have number 20, Alan McCormick, who's looks like he's going to try to be the nice little spark, nice little match that can get North Myrtle Beach back into the game so there's not as much pressure in the seventh. Jane Herndon looks for the call, winds up. Ball far outside. Ball one. A lot more hitting early on than we've seen in the later innings. Good going out in the third. Gets underneath it. Good catch. Alan McCormick, a little pop fly out in the right field. Now up to bat, number 10, Chance Hall. We're going to continue to talk about uh, things that always make me happy when you watch baseball. I do like the old school pants a little bit more than the new ones. I call me old school or nostalgic. Just feel like it makes you a better baseball player at points sometimes. Old Hunter Pence for the Phillies uh, wore them, and he was one of our better players, being a Philly fan myself. Sitting on the count 1-1 one, one right now. That was a good look right there by Chance Hall. Could have, could have fooled a couple of the other batters, but he did a good job of holding off on that. Foul tip to right, and a diving catch right there by, I believe that's Hunter Hartzog. Might have knocked the wind out of himself, but geez Louise, can't go wrong without calling Hartzog and making a good play, whether it's getting on base or making a great diving catch, but Looks like Coach is heading on out there to make sure he's okay. And it was. It was number four. Hunter Hartzog did bring in a run earlier today. Got on base, I believe, two of his three times up at bat. Maybe even three of his three times up at bat. And now just makes a spectacular catch for St. George as he's going to have to going to see if he's going to tough this one out if he just kind of shook up his stomach or if he knocked the wind out of himself. He looks to be staying out on the field. That's what I like to see, folks, some toughness. All right, now up to bat, number 19, Ethan Matthews. This guy's had his confidence all day. See if he can keep it going. Strike one, though. Herndon's determined to probably put a nice little bucket of water on his fire that he's had burning all day. Our umpire tends to keep his calls tight, but it does look like one and one is the call right now. Herndon winds up. Gets a tip off that. Now one two's the count. Time to see if North Myrtle Beach's magic is gonna continue. But like I said, they are a very passionate late inning team. Another foul tip. As you can see, Ethan Matthew Spear continue to fight. Nobody on base. And two out. Ball far outside. 2-2 two, two the count. So it looks like it's another beautiful day. Even nice and cool today. 3-2 the count. As Ethan Matthews fights his way back for a full count after being down 0-2. Foul tip as it scoots on over to another baseball field. All fans were, were safe. Nobody got hit by a ball as we had a couple fans get hit the other day. Ball hit in the deep center. Looks like number one Tyler Wright's gonna catch it and finish out the bottom of the six. 
Right now, we guys still have a tight game, still anybody's ball game, especially with the late game heroics of North Myrtle Beach as we go into the top of the seventh. We'll be right back at the County Channel. And we're back here at the top of the seventh. St. George up to bat right now. I believe number 20, Alan McCormick, is still on the mound, and he is still on the mound. And just got confirmation that the Hartzog boys are twins on St. George. Kind of makes me feel good and a little less awkward. I thought maybe I was just forcing two kids to be related, but it makes me feel a little bit better that they actually are. I am interested to see if the other Hartzog on field three that plays for the younger boys of St. George is related to them too, which if so, what a bloodline of baseball players that family has produced in a short amount of time. Now it looks like we have number 15, Clinton Westbury up to bat. It's a great number to have as an athlete, number 15. Just a uh, note, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have the Monk, Monk's Corner team versus Hartsville at 7 p.m. tonight on Field 2 on the County Channel. Immediately following this game, we will have another game, Monk's Corner. versus Hartsville, which is going to be a tough game. Hartsville did mercy rule somebody last night. Monk's Corner, as I mentioned earlier, is that that team that has a star-studded lineup kind of looking like the 92 Dream Team at points with the amount of players that they have. Foul tip, and after my little rant, looks like we're still sitting at 1-2 the count right now as Westbury's trying to fight his way back behind an 0-2 count. Wind up. Got him swinging. It's number 15's first appearance. A little bit unfortunate, but still, what an effort out there. Now, one of the people of conversation that we've had throughout the whole entire time, we got Hunter Hartzog, one of the two twins, up to bat right now. It's going to be interesting to see which one is the older one. Oh, and he hits Hartzog, and he takes his base. He's a tough kid. Not Probably got the wind knocked out of him with an amazing catch at the end of the sixth. And now taking a ball to the back, so he's going to be pretty sore tomorrow. Next up to bat, we got number nine, Trevor Hilton. Who had a good little stint out there on the mound. Now looking to try to maybe put St. George a little bit farther ahead with Hartzog on first, which has always been dangerous so far throughout this state tournament.
One and one the count right now is Trevor caught swinging pretty hard there. You do got to give it to some of these boys. When they swing, they will go for the fence. But they are also smart. And I haven't seen anybody really force too many hits. Ball, ball number two. Yeah, this is St. George's last time up to bat, so trying to give themselves as much room as possible as they can. Bring a couple people home, give themselves a little bit more of a cushion to combat the late game heroics that has been the past of North Myrtle Beach. One and two the count right now as he checks first base on Hartzog. We've kind of seen that die down quite a bit, and I'm a little bit happy about that. I've seen too many errors with the pitchers doing that, but that was a good call on that one. Caught him looking as Trevor Hilton looks a little bit distraught about watching that ball come straight down the plate and not taking a shot at it. Two outs right now. Here comes Mr. Power himself for St. George. He's been a very consistent hitter also. He's not just just known for his big bat, but he's had some very good ball placement, getting on base every single time he's been up at bat in today's game. Hartzog makes a break for second, and once again, great placement by right there by Tyler. And Hartzog takes advantage of it and gets all the way to third, and he did distract them enough for the big man, Tyler Wright, to get all the way to second base. That's a double. These two guys on base right now as we go for Tyler Wright's brief break and taking off some of his accessories. Hartzog, both Hartzogs and Tyler Wright have definitely made a very good impression of not only just general athletic ability, but their knowledge and technique for the game. These guys have some bright futures ahead if they continue to play the game of baseball. Just consistency on, on most, most parts. Now up to bat though, Jake Herndon, who has been the pitcher, did a pretty good job of finishing up the innings that he's been in. Number 20 versus 20 right now. Strike number one, Alan McCormick trying to show that maybe he has the advantage on who wears number 20. Hartzog always dangerous with his little pep step there. Ball one, one and one the count right now. Two men in scoring position, and if Herndon gets this hit, even if it's just a single, that might be just a little bit more comforting to have a three-run lead on this team. Ball two. Two and one the count right now, and McCormick's got to be careful. Don't want to load up these bases and give St. George any bit more of momentum that they have had. Ball three, down heavy. Allen McCormick, three one the count right now. He's going to have to really take some risks and maybe put some pepper on the ball and just bring it right at Herndon. There we go. That's a Good contact, but also good confidence right there from Alan McCormick to even up the, or I'm sorry, to make it a full count, 3-2 right now. And, you know, when you're at the top of the seventh with two outs with a full count, two men in scoring position, this is where we're going to see how well Herndon handles this pressure. Another foul tip, and he stays alive. Maybe he heard me and wanted to prove me wrong that he doesn't feel the pressure. We've seen a lot of these kids have very good composure in late games, and as you're going to see at the 7 o'clock game, no team emphasizes that more or shows it more than Monk's corner. And catches him looking. That was a corner ball and very distraught. Jake Herndon, two men in scoring position, and wasn't able to take advantage of growing that lead. And you can hear... North Myrtle Beach's fans screaming about the excitement because this is where they want to be.
Alan McCormick right now, after two innings of pitches, only sitting on 21 pitches, which is very good, averaging about 10 pitches an inning. Now this is where we want to be, and if no place rather you want to be if you're North Myrtle Beach than at the bottom of the seventh, only down two, you are determining your fate. So we're going to see how well these young men keep their composure. I know that's a word that I've been saying quite a bit. Looks like we got some, some changes going out there for St. George, moving some people around. Got number 11, Ivy Sweatman re-entering the game. We still got the same pitcher on the mound, Jake Herndon, who might have something to prove right there. He was caught, caught looking on that last ball, that last pitch with two men in scoring position. So missed opportunities there, but that's all part of sports, and it's not how many times you get knocked down. It's if you can get back up, and this is his chance to show that he has the ability to close out this game for St. George and pushing them on to the championship game tomorrow. Number three, Izzy Day coming up to bat. First pitch, swing and a miss right there. Izzy Day kind of having a little bit of an off day. I don't think he's gotten on base yet. And the one time he was on base, he did get out. But he's had a pretty good tournament. But the frustration shown on him today, sometimes when your emotions get ahead of you, it could, could kind of not go the way you want. And he, just swung at every single one, and that's a confidence booster right there for Herndon. Izzy May has got to keep his head up, though. He has played a great tournament so far, and sometimes in baseball, similar to basketball, you just have an off day. But now up to bat number five, Ethan Allen, the spark plug. Let's see if he can get him going. Oh, one the count right now. Foul tip right there for Ethan Allen as he finds himself down 0-2. He was the start of the Magic the other day when they rallied back versus Chester, and I think he's trying to pull another late game heroic here. And he caught him looking right there. Jake Herndon inspired by getting struck out in the last inning. Really putting that frustration to good use, striking out one of the most consistent uh, guys are getting on base this whole state tournament that I've seen. This pitcher wastes no time getting straight into it. He wants to end this game as number 26, Nico Goheen, watches that first pitch go for a ball. Ball number two, 2-0 two -oh the count. Nico Goheen kind of playing very calm and composed. Just what you want to see. And this could be the end. As Herndon wants to take that one himself, ending the game. The final score, St. George number four, North Myrtle Beach two. Now St. George advances on to the championship game tomorrow that will be played at 10 o'clock. North Myrtle Beach is eliminated from the state tournament, but they have played truly inspirational baseball at times and have been a great person to watch. These boys have a lot to hang their hat on. Please join us back at the County Channel at seven o'clock for our next game for Monk's Corner and Hartsville. This is Harry saying have a great day until then. And join us back at the County Channel shortly.